Welcome to um, the uh, supplemental video to the uh, Unit 4 uh, session of the IT-163. And in this session, in this recording, we will look at how to convert the logical model of a relational database into a physical model. To, uh, uh, to do that, we're going to be, to implement the physical model, we're going to be using Microsoft Access. So let me go ahead and launch it. Okay, great. And uh, I'm going to place uh, Axis and the uh, logical model side by side, uh, just because it's going to be easier for me instead of just switching between windows back and forth. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to put them side by side. And that way I have my logical model on the left side, I can see what uh, attributes it has. Um, and my Axis on the right side where, I, where I'm actually doing the work. Okay, in Access, you know you can notice that there's a number of sample databases like Northwind, Asset Tracking, etc., that already have some data uh, inserted into them, and this is just for you to practice. Uh, Access Microsoft sort of puts it there for you to practice, but in our case, we're going to be creating our own database, and for that, we're going to launch a blank database. And notice that. Uh, Access automatically uh, starts at the um, uh, with a blank table, blank unsaved table view, right? And this is a datasheet view. Uh, everything in Access, uh, everything in Access has two views. Um, it has a datasheet view and design view. Uh, now, also notice how it automatically created an ID column, which would be a primary ID for the table, and then we can add data and uh, you know rename columns and rename columns in the data sheet view but it's much more efficient to do that to do it in the design view so that's what we're going to switch to and as we're switching it's going to ask us uh, for the tabling now uh, notice let's look at the logical model so the logical model if you think about it the schema uh, is nothing more than just a bunch of tables with uh, relationships established in between them right Mostly it's one to many relationships, and in some cases, one table has uh, is linked to more than one table. And notice how reunion event is, uh, you know, is separate uh, from everything else. So we're going to start from the reunion event. And I'm going to name this table reunion event. Now I'm going to put underscore here instead of just space. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, in uh, you know the way computer um, programs will read uh, reads uh, blank space, they read them as percent twenty, or, or uh, I think it's percent twenty, uh, basically uh, one of the notations. And um, so typically, what you think will be this, in reality, computer will read like this, right? So. Uh, Nothing's wrong with it, but in some cases it might lead to some errors. Uh, so it's a good practice just to uh, not leave any blank spaces in when naming, you know, when naming variables, when naming uh, columns, when naming everything pretty much in software development. So I'm gonna put explicit underscore and click OK. And we have our first table, a reunion event. So now we need to populate the fields. And this is the reason I've been keeping it on the left side. So the first one is reunion ID, and notice that it's already an auto number, which means that um, it'll automatically increment as we when we insert a new record, it'll automatically increment this, uh, the, in, insert a new value in this field for that record, and will increment it automatically by one from the previous number. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do about this, I'm going to rename it so it would be. In, uh, just name just like uh, the one in my uh, logical model reunion ID okay and excellent so we got our first field in and in the logical model is called PK primary key and this is what it's going to be here and notice that uh, access automatically uh, uh, shows an icon for the first record as uh, like a little key here that's the primary key so I'm gonna populate um, the rest of the uh, fields, so reunion name, and um, it's going to be a short text because it's going to be like something like Jen's birthday, not a whole lot of text. Reunion date is obviously, I'm going to change the type here to date time, obviously because it's a date. 
And the rest of them is going to be short text. Well, actually, zip code um, zip code should be a number because it's essentially what it is. But let's keep it at short text, uh, and we'll see if uh, if we're gonna get any errors on this. All right, so I'm gonna save it now. Uh, so all this time I was in the create tab, right? Well, I, I was in the initial screen of the axis, but if I would want to go there explicitly into creating tables, I would go into create tab and then click on the table button. So now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a, a physical model, um, physical schema in Axis, and I'm going to do it in the data, database tools tab uh, by clicking on the relationships button. All right, so I have this show table pop up that shows that there is one table sitting in cache and I'm going to add, click on add to add it. And then I'm going to hit close. And I have this table here. Great. So we already have one table in. I'm going to save it. Close this. Uh, excellent. So uh, let's go ahead and add the second table, which is um, family members. So I'm going to go to create table. And let's save it and family members. All right. Now, before we continue designing that, uh, let's go back to reunion event and try inserting some, let me actually increase it real quick, um, some data into it and see if it's all going to go through. All right. So reunion event is going to be Jen's birthday. Notice that as I typed in the first value in the first column, Access automatically created a key and uh, it would increment it by one anytime I'm I'm uh, going to insert more records. So let's say reunion date is tomorrow. Reunion address is one, two, three, some um, street. State will be Indiana, Indianapolis. And the zip code is going to be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it actually accepted it as a short text. So let's save it and switch it, switch back to the design view. But I'm more comfortable keeping it as a number. Let's save this. Okay, it's just warning me that there's already some number, uh, something in there. And if I change the type, it might, it might be a shorter value, but that's fine because I know those are just numbers anyway. So second will be, uh, Jim and Jen's anniversary. Okay, notice that primary key got incremented by two. And let's put some date in there. And it's going to be the same place. Okay, so we uh, have our table and some data in it. Great. So let's get back to uh, um, uh, designing the second, so I'm going to switch to design view, the second table. The second table has a primary key of family member ID, and it's out of number. Then reunion ID is supposed to be a foreign key, and I'm going to put it as a number. Actually, let, let's keep it as short text for uh, just, I'm going to see if it's going to catch the error. So uh, by default, for some reason, Microsoft Access does not indicate foreign keys uh, automatically. You have to explicitly define them. And this is a strange thing because uh, Microsoft SQL does that, but Access doesn't. So we're going to look next on how to establish foreign keys. I'm going to populate the rest of the fields. All right. I'm going to save this. And uh, I'm going to switch to the relationships view. Click on show table and add the second double click or click add uh, the second table here. Great. So now we have this established. I want to uh, connect them 
by means of the primary key from the reunion event, which will be a foreign key in a family members. So to do that, I need to click on family, um, I'm sorry, to, on the reunion ID and hold left mouse button and drag it over the family members uh, table over the reunion ID field. And then I'm gonna release it. Now notice how it automatically um, uh, it automatically created uh, a, a relationship, edit relationship um, uh, uh, object. So basically, uh, here I'm going to confirm that the reunion ID in the reunion event table is equals to the reunion ID in the family uh, members uh, table. I'm going to check off the enforced referential integrity. Basically, it will make sure that both exist in both tables, otherwise it will not save. Relationship type one to many, that's correct because it's one to many. Now, these two uh, uh, checkboxes uh, you need to leave uh, unchecked. Basically, uh, cascade update related fields will update records in uh, when you're updating one rec uh, when you're updating reunion ID in one f in one table, it'll automatically cascade and update the same records ID in the other table, but put on or delete if you check the second one, but we don't want to do either of those. So I'm going to click on. Okay, yes, and I'm getting an error because, um, well, because it's open, Let me close this. Let's see. If okay, so this is the error I was uh, trying to show you. So both keys need to be of the same data type. Otherwise, access will start um, basically um, generating errors. So if we look at a relationship ID, the reunion ID is a number. It's out of number, but it's basically a number. If we look at family members, the reunion ID is a short text, which is the different a different data type. So both need to be of the same type. So I'm going to change it back to number. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to close both of them. Otherwise, um, it thinks that uh, I'm still working on one of them and it's locked. All right. Okay. And now I've created the first relationship between reunion event and family members um, tables. Great. Now I'm going to create a couple more tables uh, to demonstrate um, how to connect them. So the next table is going to be addresses. And it's going to have address ID as a primary key. It's going to have it's going to get connected to family members uh, as a foreign key. It's going to be a number address CD state and zip. Um, let me actually go ahead and create another table. I'm going to call it food. So food has its food ID and it's connected to family members with family member ID, which is a number. And then there's just food description, pretty simple table save this all right so we created a couple more tables now let's go into relationships and add those two tables so again show table we're going to add addresses and we're going to add food okay we're just going to drag it to make it look more like on the logical model now we need to establish the relationships between those two and that's done uh through the family member ID. So we're gonna drag family member ID, hold and drag family member ID over the family member ID in addresses. Great. And same thing for this one. Great. All right. Now, um, we created some uh, partial schema. I want you to finish off creating schema on your own and then write an essay using the instructions in the assignment. Uh, thanks for watching and I will, I'm looking forward to seeing your work. Have a good day.